All right, we're going to start with definitions of vectors. And then after that, we're going to talk about linear combinations of vectors. So here's the definition of um, a two-dimensional um, real vector is an ordered pair. Now, um, we could write the pair as A comma B, or we could write it as a column A, B without the comma because it is clear which one is which um, of real numbers. So a pair or that of real numbers. That means that this is a real number and so is this one. Ordered means that we cannot switch them around. Once the order is established, they have to stay in their position. Same thing here. Two dimensional means that there are two of them. Um, well, uh, three dimensional, I'm not gonna write the whole definition again, but I, 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 sh I think it should be clear that uh, three, uh, dimensional real vector uh, is the one that looks like A, B, C. It's a triple. So that is a tri triple, triple. There you go. As opposed to pair, now we got a triple. A, a four dimensional and by the way, when we omit the word real, we assume that the vector is real, which means we're using real numbers as opposed to integers, as opposed to um, uh, rational numbers or complex numbers or anything like that. So real just means we're gonna stay with the real numbers. A four dimensional, um, so if I just say a four dimensional vector, it is understood that we mean real vector um, would be a quadruple, quadruple, so quadruple, um, as opposed to pair, triple, so now we got a quadruple, uh, A, B, C, D. And then if we continue in this fashion, we would end up with a quintuple and sextuple and seven tuple, and eight tuple, nine tuple. So the general n-dimensional n-dimensional uh, real vector would be an n-tuple. So that n takes the place of triple, quadruple, four tuple, fifth tuple, etc. A, so it can be any generic n, and we would have, uh, see, it could be more than 26. So we don't know how many letters we need. Uh, so when we don't know the number of, of coordinates, those elements are called the coordinates in the vector, then we just start label them as a1, a2, a3, because we don't know how many we have. Uh, we, we cannot use the alphabet anymore because we don't know if we have enough letters in the alphabet. Um, and then the last one will be A sub N. So those are the entries, or you can use any letter, B1, B2, B3, and so forth. Um, so, so a vector can be a two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, or N-dimensional vector. Um, and they're not embedded into one another. In other words, a two-dimensional vector is not like a three-dimensional vector of missing one element or missing one coordinate. No, 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 no. They're completely different things, different animals. They're, they're, they live in a different world. Do not ever, ever, ever uh, think of this as 
you know, a two-dimensional vector as a three-dimensional vector where one of the elements is zero. That's not how it works. You can embed it, so you, we can make an, an, a map, a, a function that takes these vectors into those vectors by making one of them zero. But we need some kind of formality to do that. We cannot just say, oh, this goes in there. No, 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 no. They're completely different um, cities, different countries, different worlds, different universes. They, they don't belong to one another. So, so please be aware, those are completely different things. Don't, don't mix them up, please. So all of them are different. If we have different dimensions, then we have different kinds of uh, items things, objects, they, they don't belong to the same, to the same kind. Um, so some, some of us may be thinking, well, that adds complexity to, to, to the regular numbers, but we added complexity when we had fractions. So just to give you um, an example of adding complexity to things, when you have a fraction A over B, you're using two numbers, well, that's the same thing as using two numbers, except that this is not a fraction. I'm just giving you an analogy um, to show that this doesn't add too much complexity. Having two or three or four numbers doesn't add too much complexity to the objects of numbers because we already did that kind of thing before. Um, yeah. So, so those are what we're going to call two-dimensional real vector, three-dimensional real vector, and so forth. Um, those are the, the objects. So some examples of uh, vectors, uh, for instance, one seven, that's a two-dimensional vector, uh, not to be confused with one seven zero. Okay, so versus, They're, they have nothing to do with one another. I mean, they, they have similar uh, numbers, but um, it isn't true that this is that one, um, except that it's missing. No, 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 don't, don't confuse them, please. They, they have nothing to do with, with one another. They live in different worlds. Um, all right, so every time we're given a new object, and I'm assuming that this is a new object to us, then we have to learn how to operate this kind of object. Oh, before, before the operations, a, we can we can draw vectors. So let's talk about drawing vectors. All right. Um, we could have a one-dimensional vector, which would be just a number. Instead of a pair or a triple or a quadruple, we can just have a number like the number three. So just three by itself uh, is a one dimensional vector, although we don't speak too much about the one dimensional vectors. In fact, we, let's not think of beyond this little uh, remark, let's not talk much about them because it can be confusing to talk about one dimensional vectors. That, that is the only reason why. Um, but if we were thinking about them, we can draw them on the number line and we would have one, two, three. So it would be here. Now, three can have different meanings on, depending on, on, on how the number is used. Just the number three. Uh, it can be a position. It could be a slope. And it, can, it could be a motion. So, so when, we, when we have the number three, three, could be a position, so just there, or it could be a slope, but in a slope we need, we need to have a rise and a, and a run, or slope, comma, um, so that would be something like this, that is a slope of three, if you have three up and one across, that is a slope of three, or the number three, which is that, could represent a motion or a motion. By that, what we mean moving, a, a movement. Uh, so for instance, when we have one plus three, we can think of that as starting at one, 
and then moving one, two, three more units, so we end up at four. So this motion from here to here, we can think of that as the number three. So the number three can mean different things depending on the context of the, of the way the number three is being used. So three or three in parentheses, it doesn't matter, um, may mean different things depending on the context. Yeah. So for instance, if I ask you, is three this, the slope, just out of the blue, you know, you're, you're walking down the hall uh, in the mathematics department and say, hey, what is three a slope or the y-intercept? Oh, it can be the y-intercept too. Um, you can say, well, I don't know. You have to have some kind of frame of reference. So if you have 3x plus 5, then you can say, oh yeah, 3 is the slope in this equation. But if you have um, 5x plus 3, then 3 is not the slope, it is the, the y-intercept. It is a position where the line starts out at somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so likewise, the reason why I'm making all a big deal about the number three and what it could mean by itself is because uh, a vector could mean different things. Uh, drawing a vector. Yep. So let's talk about the vector. Let's stick with one example, one, three. So that is a vector. It is a, a two-dimensional vector. It lives in, in two dimensions. So, uh, so this is the x, this is the first coordinate, and this is the y coordinate. And we, if it's understood that if we don't give more reference to this, that this is x and that is y. So we have one and then one, two, three. All right, so what does it mean? Well, it could mean the position one, three, or it could mean the motion to go from zero, zero to one, three, or we can have a direction this direction going that way. Uh, so it, we could, could have a position, which would be just the dot, or a movement, motion, uh, movement, you know, from 00 to 13, or uh, we could have a direction. But it really depends on the context. <clears throat> if, if you pin me down and you ask me, well, what is a vector? I'm not gonna tell you that it is a direction or that it is a movement or a position. I'm simply gonna go back to the definition. It is an ordered pair of real numbers and I'm gonna leave it at that. It could mean that a position or a direction or, or something else even. Um, you know, it's like if you ask me, what are numbers? I can try to give you a definition, but um, if I just tell you that numbers are used to count money, that would be misleading because numbers are used for other things. It could, they can represent money or age or number of students, etc. cetera. So, so numbers can be used in, in many different ways and vectors can be used in many different ways. And it would be misleading to say that, oh, a vector has to have a direction or has to have a, some, you know, it represents a movement. That, that would be a narrow view of vectors. I'm not saying that vectors don't do that. What I'm saying is that that would be a very narrow view of vectors. That is just one of the applications of vectors. A vector in the abstract is simply a pair of numbers, a two-dimensional vector, of course. A three-dimensional vector is a triple of numbers and so forth. So that is, a vector, and so if you ask me, well, does it have to have a direction? Well, if you wanted it to have a direction, you, you can. It's like if, if you ask me, can I use numbers to count money? Well, if you wanna count money with numbers, go right ahead. You can count money with, um, I don't know, pens. You know, how many pens can you, can you buy with this money? And you don't have to have money. You can, you can use any other currency. 
uh, that, that you can come up with. I know I'm, I'm beginning to talk very abstractly, but it, it, can, it can cause frustration later on if we have a very narrow view of vectors. So that's why I'm making a big deal about that. All right, so now that we got out of the way, because that is a, an important thing to, to establish, that vectors are an abstract concept. Uh, let's talk about operations with vectors. Operations uh, with vectors. So the main two operations we're gonna um, have are the addition and the multiplication by a constant. So that little C is what I use to represent multiplication by a constant. So only two and a combination of those two, which can be done in many different ways, but only those two. So let's say you have the vector one, three, um, and then we add, so let's label this as example, this is example zero, example one, um, and then let's, let's have uh, two, five. The addition of two vectors is very, very straightforward. All you do is add the corresponding coordinates and then you're all set. So one plus two is three, uh, three plus five is eight. Voila, there we, there we have it. So that's the way we add vectors. Uh, can we subtract vectors? Um, sure, let's make an example out of that. One, three minus two, five, um, what we do is subtract one minus two, and we end up with negative one, three minus five, negative two. There we have it. There, there is the, the, um, the answer of subtracting vectors. So we can add vectors, we can um, subtract vectors, and they have to be of the same dimension. We cannot add or, or subtract vectors of different dimensions. That wouldn't make sense at all. Yeah, yeah it, it jams. If you try to add two vectors of two dimensions, so let, just for the sake of uh, showing you what I mean. So even if, if, if we innocently write two, five, zero, thinking, oh, all you have to do is, no, 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 this, this, this kind of thing makes no sense. The, yeah, don't it, don't try to do that. It, it, it's yeah. Um, the other thing we can do with vectors is that we can multiply vectors with scalars. So a scalar is just a number, the same kind of number as the elements that the vector is made of. So another, in our case, we're gonna call real numbers our our, our scalars. So multiplication by scalars. So scalars, in this case, um, also known as real numbers. But the reason why we, we have real numbers is because we are dealing with real vectors. Earlier, I mentioned that the elements in the vector don't have to be real numbers, they could be integers. Uh, so those would be the scalars, the integers. Uh, or actually, and you can change the scalars too, so, so it can get a little more complicated than that. But for now, let's assume that the scalars are the same kind of element as the, as the elements in the, in the vector, so real numbers in our case. So, if you have the, the vector one, three, and we can multiply it with seven, there's no, there's no need to put a dot or anything like that, just the seven in front of it. We can put it in the back, same thing. All we have to do is multiply the seven with each one of the coordinates. So seven times one is seven, seven times three is 21, and there it is. Yep. yep. So that causes, um, or that's what we call the scalar multiplication. All right, now we cannot combine two vectors yet. We will uh, combine them 
by some kind of multiplication, but there's gonna be a weird multiplication. The way we're gonna combine two different vectors in, well, I guess we are combining them here with addition, but in the general combination we're gonna use is called a linear combination. So let's talk about linear combinations. of two vectors. Now the vectors don't have to be in two dimensions. They could be in three dimensions or four dimensions. And you don't have to have two vectors. You can have three vectors or four vectors or one vector for that matter. I should have started with one vector. Let's come back to one vector in a moment. Uh, let me follow the number in here. Example five. So, um, a linear combination of, of the vectors 1, 3, and 2, 5 is simply multiply this by some number, say 7 as we did before, multiply this by some other number, mm, let's do negative 2, negative 2, there we go. So multiply each one of those two vectors by two numbers, they could be the same, they could be different, they could be 0, one of them, it doesn't matter and perform the operation. That is what is called a linear combination of two vectors. So in this case, we have seven times one is seven, 21. We saw that earlier, and then we're gonna add negative four and negative 10 when we multiply negative two times that vector. And then we add the two. So seven plus negative four is three, 21 plus negative 10 is 11. So the linear combination of seven negative two on one, three, two, five gives us three, 11. Uh, I guess the other way to say it is seven times one third, I mean one, three plus negative two times two, five gives us three, 11. So that is a linear combination. And, and we can generate many things. One problem that we will try to solve Ooh, let's start, this is an interesting problem is, okay, given two vectors, one, three, um, and two, five, yes. Um, can we combine them to come up with a random vector? You know, can we, can we have a linear combination? So question mark, question mark, okay. And not, not necessarily the same number. Those are two different question marks. So that we end up with, let's say one, zero. Can, that's a basic, basic problem in linear algebra. Very, very crucial problem. A very essential problem in linear algebra. Can we combine vectors to come up with a third one? And by combining vectors, we mean have a linear combination that gives us this. Hmm. Well, we can use the analytic method, which assumes that there is a solution and then try to draw information from the solution. So let's pretend there is a solution. A, one, three. This is just the algebraic method. Uh, uh, same thing as analytical method. Um, it's just a fancier way to say that. So if we multiply with A, then we end up with um, A and three A plus multiply with B, so 2B and 5B, and that it should be equal to one zero. Let's solve this problem. And, they, and then, well, we can add those two. Um, so A plus 2B, that's one quantity. I'm gonna, no, I'm not gonna put parentheses. That's one entry. Um, because the vector we end up with is a two-dimensional vector. This is the first coordinate, and the second coordinate will be 3a and 5b. 3a plus 5b. So this is, should be equal to one zero. Now, something I did not mention before, but now I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention, is that um, two vectors are equal exclusively, only, absolutely only, when each one of the corresponding coordinates are exactly the same. Otherwise, they're not equal. So if you have a, 
a 10 dimensional vector and all the numbers are the same, but one is different, they're not equal. All it takes is one of the numbers to be different um, for them, for the vectors not to be equal. So if we claim that those two are equal, that means that this guy has to be equal to that one and this other coordinate has to be equal to zero. Uh, let me start on a new page. So we are continuing with example six, continuing. Uh, and what we have is that a plus two b, a plus two b is equal to one, while three a plus five b is equal to zero. All right. And we can multiply the first equation by three, and that gives us, um, so I'm gonna multiply this by three to get three a plus six b equals three. And then we can subtract those two equations. Um, it, it doesn't matter which way you, we subtract, we're gonna, so let's subtract just this, but this one minus that one. So we're gonna subtract three uh, a minus three a is no a, five b minus six b is negative b, zero minus three equals negative three. And that means that b has to be three. And then there's a couple of things we could do. We can substitute back or, um, or you can just solve for A. A is one minus two Bs. So one minus two of those is one minus six. So that is negative five. So A would have to be negative five. And um, so then we have it. The original question in example six was, can we find two numbers or, and a better way to say this, can we find a linear combination of one, three and two, five that gives us one, zero? And the answer is yes, there's two numbers. And furthermore, those two numbers are unique so that we end up with one, zero. And those two numbers are respectively negative five and three. So negative five times one, three plus three, times um, two five gives us one O. Now, whenever you are working this out, um, you should check your answer. So this is the linear combination that gives us one zero. Now, before, before you turn problems in, it is again a good idea to double check your work. It doesn't take too much. Um, so I'm gonna double check and just to make sure. Um, so I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna put checking just to be sure. Um, so multiply back the negative five times that. So that is negative five and then negative 15. And then we're gonna add that to six and 15, all right? So those two added together give us one and those two give us zero. So we're gonna put a smiley face, so we're good. Yes, so that checks. That is the linear combination that works. And you may be thinking, oh, this is cool. You know, if you give me one, um, I, can, I can always come up with the answer. Well, let's, let's increase the volume. Let's, let's up the ante, as they say. Uh, okay, Let, let's see. Um, let's pretend you got the same vectors as before. So now, now we have a new problem. I'm gonna present you with a new problem. Two, five, same original vectors. Is there a linear combination? Um, let's label the linear combination X and Y. Okay, so there, are there two numbers that you can always get not one, zero, not zero, one, but any A, B, any generic vector. So if you give me, um, pick your favorite numbers, you know, like, like 10, 20, can you come up with two numbers? Yes, of course we can because, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say of course, it seems we could, because we did it here and it worked out and it looks like if we change the numbers, we should be able to do the same kind of thing again. Um, but can, can we actually do that for any, any two numbers like 10 and 20? And, in, in, and if so, what is the formula? 
that will generate a generic A and B. Again, this is a central part of linear algebra. Very, very important part of linear algebra. Um, yeah, so can we find these guys? And of course, they have to be a formula in terms of A and B. So, okay. Okay, so now I'm excited. Let's, let's see if we can do that. The process is very much the same. So multiply here. Uh, so we're gonna have X um, and three X, multiply the X into the vector, uh, multiply the Y into the second vector, two Y and five Y. Um, add them together, so we're going to have x plus 2y, x plus 2y, and 3x plus 5y, 3x plus 5y, and we want it to be equal to a, b. Yeah, and we are assuming there is a solution, so the consequence of having a solution is that then we can say that those two are equal, and then we can draw consequences about x and y. All right, and the process is very much the same as, as the one in example six, because it is the same problem. The difference is that we had a, a particular kind of vector, a very, very special vector, one zero, a very particular, a very specific vector. Now we have a general vector A, B. So let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna write down the equations here. So we have X plus two Y equals A, and 3x plus 5y equals b. And what I'm going to do is, um, as before, multiply by 3. So we end up with 3x plus 6y equals 3a. We're going to subtract. So 3x minus 3x is no x, 5y minus 6y. So we're going to so tract um, negative y equals um, b minus 3a. Uh, if we multiply both sides by y, rather by negative one, we end up with y equals 3a minus b. Okay, but x is a minus two of those. Uh, I guess I can use this piece of paper. So X equals A minus two of the Y's, but Y is three A minus B. So let's expand this minus six A plus two B. So that is negative uh, five A plus 2b. So the answer is, sure. If, if, if you give me a, b, any two numbers in the world, any one million and two, whatever numbers you want to plug in, square root of two and square root of 17, whichever numbers, can I come up with two numbers that multiplying with one, three, one number times this, the other number multiplied with two, five, that will produce this specific one? And the answer is absolutely yes. This number has to be 3a minus b, 3a minus b, and that number would have to be negative 5a plus 2b, negative 5a uh, plus barnacles, uh, sorry. I don't like doing this, but I didn't measure my distances correctly. So let's just write it better. Uh, negative 5a plus 2b, there we go, times 1, 3, plus, what was the other number? 3a minus b times 2, 5, yeah. So, uh, so, Give me two random numbers. Oh, this is a YouTube video. You cannot give me a random number. You cannot reply to me. It would take too long for by the time you reply and then I look it up and, and then I continue the video. So yeah, that wouldn't work, would it? Anyway, so let's, let's think of two random numbers such as 
I don't know, um, 10 and um, eight. Okay, so can I find a combination? See, and, and so, so we can mass produce these numbers combining those two. That's what we are doing. Why? Because we have a formula. We have a, a factory of, of combinations of those that make up any number you ever wanted. So, uh, oh, I want, so negative 50 because A is 10 and B is eight. So negative, oh, why did I use a big number? Negative 50 plus 16 is negative 34, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just doing this in my head. All right, so negative 34 times that. And then three times 10 is 30 minus eight, that's 22. So if my formula is correct, if I combine, if I come up, if, if I actually perform this linear combination of one, three and two, five, which should end up with 10, eight. Well, let's see uh, if that is true. Uh, this combination is uh, negative 34, uh, negative 102. All right. And then we're going to add 44 and 110. Yep. So I see the eight coming out of that. Yep. And I see the 10. Yep. So it checks. So there is the linear combination that produces a B. So we can mass produce that. You, you give me any number, one, two. Can I come up with a combination of one, three, and two, five? And the answer is sure, it's, it's gonna take me just a second. Well, about two seconds. So negative five plus two, negative three, um, three A, so three minus two or one will do. Let's just double check. I can do this in our head. Uh, we can do this in our head too. <gasps> Did I do something wrong? Let's see, negative, negative five plus, oh, two times two is four. So that is negative one. See, that's, that's why we have to double check. All right, and then uh, three minus two is one. Oh, so this combination will do. Oh, after the fact, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, of course it will work. Two minus one, two minus one is one and five minus three is two. So sure enough, one of those and a negative one of those, will, that linear combination gives one, two. So that is, a, imagine doing that though with three dimensional vectors, same process, but it gets more complicated though. It is more work because there's more things, more equations, and then we have to substitute equations and eliminate variables and so forth. That is a central topic in linear algebra. Yeah, people spend a lot of time and energy doing that. Before I forget, um, in, let's talk a little bit about three dimensional vectors. Uh, of course that lives in three dimensions. So we have X, Y, Z. This is the standard way of, of drawing X, Y, and Z coordinates. If you didn't know that, please get to know this. Uh, another way to do it, I guess, is a little bit like this. So those two are always the same, Y, Z, and then X could look more like, like that a little bit. You know, the angle at which X comes uh, can vary. And we think of the axis X coming towards us as we are looking at this, at this three-dimensional uh, coordinate system. And then the Y is going in the positive direction on to the right of us as we see this. And then Z goes up. So the negative goes down, the negative Z goes down, the negative Y goes to the left, and the negative X goes away from us. It's kind of difficult to draw three-dimensional pictures on a two-dimensional piece of paper, but that's what we do. Um, so there are three vectors that are very, very named. Uh, 
So the vector 1, O, O also is labeled as I, the vector I. And that really has not much to do with the imaginary number I, it's just I. Uh, and then we have the vector um, O, 1, O. Uh, it, it's interesting, I, I, without thinking I was doing this in as a horizontal uh, triple rather as a vertical triple. Oftentimes we do that, we change that. Uh, so as long as we don't change the order, so this is one, zero, zero. If we draw this as a vertical vector, a vertical array of numbers, it would be one on top, zero and zero. So the order does not change. And what, by order we mean from left to right and up and down. So this is also labeled as J, the vector J. And then this one, a zero, zero, one is gonna label K. So if you see I, J, and K in textbooks, in uh, notes, other people using it, just remember that is just um, the standard unit vectors that go along the X, Y, and Z axis. So, so this is I, J, and K. Yep. Um, let's draw linear combinations. Draw uh, linear combinations. Uh, actually sets of linear combinations. Okay. So if you have the vector one, three, uh, let's think of this as example eight. So if you have just one vector, one, three, what are the possible linear combinations of this? Well, if you multiply by two, you have two, six. So that is a linear combination of one, three. Another linear combination could be if you multiply that by three. Um, so three, uh, nine. Or if you multiply by negative one, negative one, what I mean by that is multiplying the original one uh, and negative three, or you can multiply by zero. So you end up with zero, zero. So that is a linear combination of this vector. Or you can multiply by a half, uh, one half, three halves. That gets a little tricky to write down because each one of the numbers is a fraction which occupies more space. And so, the, the parenthesis gets longer, but it is what it is. Um, it, oh, we could write this as a half times one, three to save some space because uh, the way we multiply it is by simply multiplying each one of the coordinates. Um, but then that goes away from the point that, that I'm trying to make that that is actually a linear combination of this vector. And um, there's one that is kind of important and you will see it later why it is important. One over the square root of 10 and uh, three over the square root of 10. That is another vector, which is a linear combination of this one. Okay. So, so we wanna draw all of those guys. How, how do they look like? Let's see. So one, three is there. That's the vector one, three, zero, zero is there. Two, six, so that is one, three up. Two and six up would be there. And then three, nine would be three, nine. So somewhere in there. And then we would have one half and three halves, one half and three halves. And also the opposite, negative one, negative three. So as you can tell, all of those form a straight line, straight line through zero, very important, through zero. So the set of linear combinations of all, and all, all the linear combinations of one, three is the line that goes through zero, zero and the point one, three or the vector one, three. So 
this is this this entire thing completely all the way without stopping uh, will be the set so that is the set of all and every one of the LC linear combinations of one three okay so that is an again that is another central part I, it, it sounds like i'm exaggerating like oh it, isn't everything that, central to linear algebra um no there are some parts that are more essential more basic and this is one of them and maybe the reason why i'm emphasizing that so much uh in this video is because i'm trying to show you some of the most important parts and and maybe that that's the way it is it, is I'm trying to show you what is important. Okay. So what about having two? Okay, so now it gets a little more tricky. This is a, a more complicated um, question. So the set of all, and when we say all, we mean everyone, all linear combinations of one, three, and two, five. So the question is, what are the, all of those? Hmm. So if we were naive initially, not too naive, if we were a little bit naive, we would think, oh, well, the linear combinations of one, three is I'm gonna take a ruler very quickly so I can just make my line a little more straight than, than free drawing it. There we go. Okay. Um, oh wait, that looks way better. And um, two five, well, that would be two. Uh, so that was three, four, five. Oh, that's close. Uh, it's not gonna be on the line. How do we know it's not on the line? Is it gonna be below or above the line? Well, let's look at the slopes. Uh, rise is three. So the slope of this line is three, M equals three. The slope of this one would be five over two, which is 2.5. So that means that it's a lower, it's a different slope. So, um, somewhere around here, but it's gonna be reasonably close. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, now that I, I think about it, they are fairly close, the two, um, the two of them there. Okay, this is a good example actually. Uh, uh, that, was, that was just a good, a happy coincidence that this is a, a good example. M equals um, five over two, that is the slope of this line because it is rise over run and, and the rise would be five and the run would be two for each one of those points. So if we were thinking about the set of all the linear combinations, we would be thinking, well, the linear combinations of one, three are those, the linear combinations of two, five are those, yes. But then we have to combine the additions. We have to be able to add the vector. So this vector plus this vector is not necessarily in one of those two lines. It's gonna be somewhere in between and then this vector minus this vector will be outside. Hmm. So, so what is it? Well, the answer, we already answered that actually. In example, was it six? Uh, the ex nope, example seven. So the example seven said, okay, can we find a linear combination that gives us any, remember? any pair, any pair whatsoever. And remember when we checked, we checked with 10A, just random numbers. You, I don't have a, an audience, so they cannot just throw numbers to me. Otherwise, it, that would be more fun if you can just give me a true random number, you know, um, or one, two, because you may be thinking, hey, he, he thought of that ahead of time. No, 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 I just, I just randomly thought of that on the spot. Anyway, 
Um, so no matter what numbers you throw, we will come up with a linear combination, as crazy as it may be, that produces those, those new vectors. So problem number seven, or example seven, tells us that we can actually generate every single one of those, every point, because there's a linear combination. There is an, an, a number X and a number Y, so that multiplied with one, three, and y multiplied with two five, and then adding them together, we're gonna to create every single point on the plane. So the set of all linear combinations of this is, so the answer is the whole x, y plane. Yep. Sometimes we call this uh, r squared. Yeah, all of r squared, so all of the points because we already said that. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too far out, you know, with 10, 8, that was a big number, big number. So one, two. So if you take one of those, one of these vectors, and then come back one, three, um, so negative one and three, yep, uh, yep, negative one, and three, I cannot see my, we're gonna end up with one, two. Yeah, the, the lines are almost too close. Let's do one more thing real quick. You still within this. Let's say I wanna come up with uh, three, four, five. I wanna come up with this point, five O, using those two vectors. So, is there a linear combination that does that? Well, I'm not gonna redo the whole thing since we already have a formula in example seven. Uh, in the answer of example seven, here's the formula. Um, so if I wanna end up with five O, all we have to do is do negative 25, boy, that's a lot, one threes, negative 25, And just double checking, one, three, plus uh, 15, whoa, yeah, 15 of the two fives, that will give us five O. Oh. So I wanted to come up with this. And as, as we can tell, it is not easy. We have to go, where's the one, three? There's one, three. We have to go negative. So we have to come back this way, 25 of those, those distances, all the way down here, 25. And then we gotta, yeah, the slope is different. The slope is more, is less steep. So then 15 going forward, 15 go, coming this way, and that will take us exactly to this spot. So come back again, 25 this way, and then 15 this way, and it will get us to exactly that point. It's, check it out, try it out with your own vectors. Um, yep, yep. By the way, those two vectors, one, three, and two, five, can, since they can generate the entire grid, every, every one point, every, every one of the points on the plane, those two can, can be a basis. You know, a basis is really the X and the Y axis, but instead of using the X and the Y axis, we could use, this axis and this axis, this could be like our x axis and our y axis, our one three axis or our, our two five axis, because by combining those two, yeah, let me, let me back up a little bit to, 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 to show you what we mean. So this is a Cartesian coordinate system because we're using this vector as a, as a unit to go in one direction and this vector to go as a unit to go in the in a different direction. And can we locate a point anywhere on the plane? Yes, so here you go two this way, one that way, and there we have it, two, one. Can we do that with those? So instead of using this nice direction and this nice direction, can we do that using this direction and that direction? And the answer is absolutely yes. It will get really complicated 
comparing to this. But if we didn't know anything other than that, then we would think this is just the way it is. Um, yeah. So negative twenty-five. Yeah, I think I was telling you the the wrong the wrong line. Negative twenty-five one three one three is this guy. So we would have to come negative twenty-five this way, and then come back. Anyway, yes, it may. Um, yeah, we can use this vector and this vector as our basis for generating every point, and we can do that. This would be really awkward because uh, they're not of the same length, so that means it, it would get kind of complicated to use those. This is super duper friendly, and in and it's easy to tell when two vectors are parallel or perpendicular using this coordinate system as opposed to this one. And in physics, it is super duper important to be able to measure not only whether two vectors are perpendicular or, or parallel, but also uh, if they are not, by how much? That is super duper important in physics. Um, here, the angles would be much more difficult to work with if we were using those two vectors as the basis of this of the space. A uh, quick other topic that I wanted to mention before we close this video is the length of a vector. The length of a vector. If it is one dimension, so let's talk about dimension. Uh, generic vector and length. Let's just make a quick table. So I'm gonna draw the vectors horizontally to save space. Otherwise we're gonna take up too much vertical space. So if the dimension is one, we got just a number A. Now this number could be positive or negative. However, the lengths are always to be always thought to be positive. So to make sure this guy is positive, we're gonna square it, but then that gets us bigger than what we want. So we're gonna take the square root. Yep. So that is the length of this, of any vector, of this vector, which is one dimensional. We are usually not gonna talk about one dimensional vectors because it, it gets confusing with the scalars. It's not a, it's not prohibited. It's not like we cannot. It's just unnecessarily confusing. A two-dimensional vector, A, B. Okay, so what is this length? Now, this, is, this uses the regular basis, the standard canonical basis, you know, horizontal and vertical. And so this can be thought as the legs of a triangle. You know, I'm gonna draw a quick picture over here. So you go, you know, A, and B, so what is the length of this vector? Well, this is a right triangle, so we can use B, we can use Pythagoras, and so you know that this is gonna be A squared plus B squared under the square root. So that is the length of this vector. Um, I have to tell you the notation. There's a couple different notations. I'll, I'll write that in a moment. Um, three, a, B, C. Okay, so that gets a little more complicated, but it's still geometric. So we go A, B, C, and we want to know this distance. So this is A, B, C. Well, first you can find this distance across. That is the square root of a squared plus b squared because you got a right triangle here. All right, so, so now we got a vertical triangle, which is also a right triangle, where the bottom leg is this, and this side is c. So this hypotenuse would be the square root of this base squared, square root of a squared plus b squared squared, plus c squared. But then the square and the root simplify each other. So we end up with the square root of 
a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And if you are in four dimensions, a, b, c, d, the length is, as you can probably tell, a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus d squared. And if you have n dimensions, so a sub one, a sub n, it could be 20, 30, 40, whichever, the length is the square root, square root of a sub one squared plus a sub two squared and so forth. And then we end up with a sub n squared. So square the coordinates, add them together, take the square root, that is the length. The length of a vector is typically written as with two bars, but sometimes I will use uh, one bar uh, but many books use two bars, so I'm just going to stick with it. So this is a squared plus b squared. Yep, let me double check uh, quickly with my notes to make sure I'm not missing something. No, it looks like we are good. This is a good first video. So I'm going to stop the first video here. <laughs>